Hey everyone, I hope this video comes to you all doing well this evening. I'm going to be reading a lot and I'll explain everything to you momentarily. This video is one I've been praying for for nearly a month now. How to put it forth, this personal message, which is also a global message. I've prayed that my answering this challenge from Defenders for Children is listened to for what it is and nothing more. It is a call to action for the innocent children everywhere. A call to be intentional and mindful of all that are around you. A call to be the voice for the voiceless. A call to think less of self and more of the children. I realize what I am about to say Maybe hard for some to hear or accept or both. But I accept God's call, God's call to do what is best for the greater good. I am asking all my friends and family to take this challenge with me, those around the world, the U.S. and global, to stand with me, with the children. Of the world today. I come to you in very meager everyday attire around the house attire because I want you to hear my words and not look at me. I also like I said before I read one because of nerves, two because I want to say it correctly, and three because of my PTSD from the things I'm going to be speaking of that affect the memorization of things, especially things most dear to me. So here it goes. Imagine yourself walking backwards out of a federal medical prison, waving goodbye to your father until the guards wheeled him away. A father who you no longer carried the surname of, yet always carried in your soul. Without further detail, I will say that was I, my birth father. Just 10 years ago, this week. I was living in Costa Rica at that time, learning more of a culture, though my grandfather from Cuba, that I was unable to be raised around. Over the years, there were shows, talk shows, and book, and a book about my father. Those years, growing out, up without him, they did something to me, deep within, that could never be undone. And I say these things not out of anger or bitterness, because I loved my father with all my heart and always wanted to be daddy's little girl. And those last days, I knew I felt that again. But I want you to know that those pains could never be undone. Yet, they also made me the tough woman that I am standing, sitting before you all this evening making this video. While at the same time, they caused me other things to happen in my life. I was hurt by another young man, indirectly, but because of him, my father, when a little girl. Later, because of all of this, I unconsciously put myself in harm's way throughout my life, not just one time, once is bad enough, but multiple times. Prior to, during, and since the military, there were rapes, yes, with an S, physically abused multiples, nearly kidnapped twice when I lived in Costa Rica. The list can go on and on, but it's not about me. It's about the message you're hearing, I hope, from this. I attempted suicide approximately a dozen times. Within minutes of death, a few of those. 
and nine of the attempts were just within three years. My last attempt was the very year that my daddy died. Though a few months afterwards, but he died just ten years ago, this week. Only by the grace of God am I alive today. I know God has a reason for me, and that is one important reason I am in seminary today, preparing myself to help others that have survived crises as I have, and that are or were children of prison inmates. The self-esteem that arose, then the added crises that I experienced later, affected me beyond explanation. Many children of prison inmates and children that are abused in all manners, physically, abandonment, and many, many more forms, end up as inmates themselves or feeling they are unworthy of the outside world to see them in a positive manner. Living as boxed into this society that society has placed them in instead of a box that instead of outside the box and flourishing as they should be. They need the encouragement that they are worthy. I needed this encouragement. These families do their best to raise their children. My mother did her very, very, very best. The harm was already done because of that absent parent incarcerated and the children subconsciously allowing the surrounding facts to affect their lives. My goal in doing this is not for attention to me but to heed the call from Defenders for Children to tell my story again not for me but for you to understand and listen and become attentional I want to help others that have gone through similar circumstances or that will possibly ever have to go through these circumstances or living in it today to help survivors to not blame themselves, not let society to blame themselves, to educate the public or prisoners, families, and children, survivors of multiple types of abuse, as well as and most importantly to us to explain, for me to learn to explain and help better help others to understand redemption and forgiveness. So now, as I have briefly given you my background, I, Joni Dixon, have accepted this challenge from Defenders for Children so that my